keeping their hopes alive for a repeat by forcing a game six against the Lakers. Meanwhile, ABC's Will Reeve reports in the East, the Knicks are also fighting to see another day on the court. Big win at the Garden for the New York Knicks. The Knicks and the Warriors staying alive. Wiggins, he'll take it. James Each team at home facing 3-1 series deficits, staving off elimination. Curry spots up in the corner. Got it! Steph Curry leading the Warriors to victory with 27 points, three of those on this halftime buzzer beater. Curry lets it fly. The 121 to 106 win shifting the series back to LA, where LeBron James and the Lakers will have another chance to close out the series. But game six is up in the air after a late game head injury to Anthony Davis. Davis seen in apparent pain at the sidelines, reportedly taken away in a wheelchair. The medical team seems to say he's been he's doing better, so you know, that's what matters the most. Meanwhile, in New York, the Knicks built up as much as a 19-point lead at Madison Square Garden before Jimmy Butler and the Heat came storming back. Butler cans it. New York led by Jalen Brunson's 38 points, ultimately gritting it out in the final tense moments. Just trying to do everything I could to win. We did that, and now it's only game six. That was ABC's Will Reeve reporting. NBA playoff action continues tomorrow. You can catch game six of the Eastern Conference semifinals at 6.30 in Miami. Meanwhile, the Lakers host game six of the Western Conference semifinals. That is tomorrow night at 9. As people continue to look for ways to stretch their dollars at the grocery, there are some signs that there is some relief from all the inflation we've been seeing. Which items are seeing the price drop? And new today at five when it's time to hit the road. Most of us buckle the kids up in the back seat, but new crash tests reveal major injuries for our littlest passengers in small vehicles can have in a crash. It's today at five after entertainment tonight. SA Live has a big audience today, a fresh group of fifth graders from Harlandale ISD's GT program. Where do you see what there? Oh, there's a big kid, Mike Osterhage. It's coming up after the news at noon. The day that puts our border back in the spotlight nationwide is here. Title 42 expiring today. That policy put into place back in 2020 to curb the spread of COVID-19 gave the U.S. government the power to quickly expel migrants at the southern border. So we're keeping a very close eye on all of our border towns right now, but especially El Paso, where there's a state of emergency that has already been declared. Here's CNN's Gloria Pasmino. Title 42 has allowed the U.S. to swiftly return migrants back to Mexico or to their home countries. In fact, authorities here at the border have turned migrants back more than 2.8 million times since the policy was put into place in March of 2020. Now, uh, migrants are just beyond this wall that you see here behind me. This is all that separates the U.S. and Mexico. Title 42 will expire tonight at midnight and the country will go back to old immigration protocols at a time of unprecedented mass migration in the Western Hemisphere. Eric Mendoza is breaking down. He faces the possibility of deportation after making the months-long trek from his native Honduras. He says he paid $50 for the set of documents. It's a likely scam many migrants, desperate for answers, are falling prey to. He says he wants to be here legally. Just like him, there are thousands more in El Paso. Rosaura Rivas says her husband and four kids fled violence from Venezuela. They spent the last month at this shelter. She helps out in the kitchen, trying to save money to buy bus tickets to Denver, where they have friends. The Opportunity Center for the Homeless in El Paso can barely keep up. We need to do what's right by these folks. They've gone through so much. Meanwhile, El Paso City officials are working to open up emergency shelters and say the city is at a breaking point. We want to be able to find a solution to how do we take care of the human person because they are human beings. Federal officials are trying to discourage migrants from crossing. Let me be clear. The lifting of the Title 42 public health order does not mean our border is open. In fact, 
It is the contrary. Those who are already here wait and do their best with what they have. Others try to stay connected and hopeful, while their families on the other side of a screen are a constant reminder of why they're here. Now, an unprecedented number of migrants have turned themselves into Border Patrol, including just in the last few hours. Border Patrol vehicles arrived here behind me. They took several migrants into custody and transported them away. So far, more than 26,000 people are in custody. Reporting in El Paso, Texas, Gloria Pasmino. Meanwhile, Governor Greg Abbott continues to send a message and migrants to other cities. A busload of roughly 50 migrants dropped off in front of Vice President Kamala Harris's residence at the U.S. Naval Observatory last night. And today, two more buses will do the same. It is the latest in a series of relocation operations in which Abbott has sent migrants from our border to other cities outside of Texas. He says so far he has sent more than 17,000 migrants to sanctuary cities. A new mRNA vaccine that programs your body to fight pancreatic cancer is showing some early promise. It's a personalized cancer vaccine that's being tested by BioNTech. It's tailored to each patient's tumors by extracting the tumor and using the genetic code from it. So far, 16 patients were able to complete the, all of the phases of the pancreatic cancer vaccine study. Eight of them responded to the vaccine which taught their immune systems to recognize and fight off the cancer cells. And none of the eight have seen their cancer return. Among the eight who did not respond adequately to the vaccine, two have not seen their cancer come back. The surgeon who led the study points out it's a small study, but it does show a correlation, not causation. Millions of Americans have been prescribed antidepressants for chronic pain, but a new study indicates that those drugs may not help. Chronic pain is defined as pain that lasts more than three months, and one in three of us suffer with it. A two-year study of 25 different antidepressants showed that only one of them appeared to be effective in treating chronic pain, and that medication is Deluxetine, which is sold under the name brand of Cymbalta. But even with this medication, the long-term side effects are not yet known. Attention shoppers, prices finally heading downward. That's according to data from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. It saw milk drop 2% last month. Fruit and vegetables dropped half a percentage point. And meat, poultry, fish, and eggs also dipped slightly. Meanwhile, eating out has gotten more expensive. Prices at restaurants were up nearly half a percent last month. And the number of people filing un initial unemployment claims reaching its highest point in nearly two years. There were 264,000 first-time claims in the first week of May. That's up 22,000 from the week before. The Labor Department says that's the highest number since late October of 2021. It's also about 10,000 more than economists were expecting. Weekly unemployment claims have been trending upward, which could be a sign that the U.S. labor market is weakening. Looking outside again with live cam. Sun is out. It is uh, humid out there, to say the least. But uh, get your chores done outside today, tomorrow. Yeah, good day to get out and mow the lawn, perhaps, today or tomorrow, before we get some rainier weather headed our way this weekend. The radar did show a few showers earlier here around San Antonio, but they were light, and they are now moving away. So we can pretty much take away rain chances for the rest of the afternoon. I'll show you the radar one more time. And as I said, uh, most of this is uh, moving east or southeast and away from us. And skies have tried to clear a little bit, so that is uh, really boosted temperatures. Here's your case at 12 hour forecast as you plan out the rest of your day, 87 to 3 o'clock, 89 at 5 p.m. And then down into the 70s by tonight, uh, 77 at 10 p.m. with partly cloudy skies. Clouds build back in tomorrow. We'll basically do this all again, but it's late tomorrow night where things begin to change. We get a line of storms that will come in and that's going to create some flooding issues Friday night through especially Saturday morning. New flood watch has been issued. It has been a long time since the San Antonio area has been under a flood watch, but here we are Friday 7 p.m. through 8 p.m. Saturday. That's when we expect those storms to come in. We're going to have to watch those little water crossings, the streams, the creeks as uh, upwards of four to five inches possible, at least in localized spots. We're going to talk much more about this forecast and the rest of the weekend forecast too coming up in just a couple of minutes. Thank you, Justin. We have a new superstar on the green. 
able to celebrate a big win with her team, where this UTSA golfer is set to play next. The month of May bringing showers, but also sales. What items will see the deepest discounts? The month of May brings flowers, but also sales. And don't forget Mother's Day. If you do it right, you might find the perfect gift for a mom at a price that's not going to break the bank. CNN's Maribel Amber with details on gadgets and comfort that can make your mom smile. From Mother's Day to Memorial Day, May is packed with sales and opportunities to save. Deal News recently took a look at things to buy this month and where to find the savings. Start with Mother's Day deals, but look beyond the usual gifts of flowers and jewelry. Deal News says Crate and Barrel will likely have a sale. Last year, the retailer's spring kitchen event featured significant savings on a variety of items, including espresso machines. May has also been a good time to find sales on major appliances. Watch warehouse clubs like Costco for savings and also check with manufacturers directly for discounts. And as Memorial Day approaches, as expected appliances, both large and small, will be on sale. Watch for savings from Amazon and retailers like Kohl's. Another popular item usually discounted in May? Mattresses. Last year, mattress firm cut up to 50% off select items. And don't forget, as the weather turns warmer, now is the time to find specials on air conditioners before they're marked up for the summer. You should also see a variety of savings on spring apparel. Watch for sales from Macy's, J. Crew, and others. For more on where to find deals in May, check out the full story at dealnews.com. And that's probably another good thing to do over the next day and a half. Go buy your Mother's Day gift now. You don't want that to be the, the weather to be the excuse. <laughs> Ooh, uh, no, you don't. And I know a lot of people have Mother's Day plans on Sunday. Uh, you know, just keep in mind, it could still be a little bit damp on Sunday. We still could see some showers around. So you may want to work your plans around that threat. Uh, so far today, 82, the high, the average is 85. We'll, we'll be above average today. Not uh, close to the record, though, 100 set back in 1967. The low this morning, 73. It's been warm. It's been humid. Will that lead to some rain? Of course, the short answer is yes, but how much? We'll take a look coming up. And looking back over the last year, we went into temperatures that were in the hundreds and no rain around this time. We almost need a refresher course on what it means to get a lot of rain. It uh, it has been almost a couple of years, honestly, since we've had just a huge rainfall event. I'm not saying that this is going to be some sort of record event, uh, but we do think we'll get some heavy rain out of it. And hopefully that will go a long way to cutting into this drought, which has been with us for so very long. This is the latest drought monitor just came in today. We still have places in our viewing area that are within an exceptional drought. That's the highest category. Bandera, Kerrville, Bernie, Blanco, Fredericksburg, down in Medina Lake and Hondo, just to name a few. San Antonio's within the extreme drought. It's been this area here, honestly, this sort of hill country area that has been hit the hardest. But I think that we'll cut into it. We'll put a dent into it with some rain over the weekend. And our eastern uh, counties, part of our uh, viewing area here, uh, saw the drought go away with some recent rains. So we're getting there. We're, we're doing much better. You look at rainfall uh, since March 1st, and it has been plentiful. 6.53 inches. That is above average for that time period. And since January 1st, 8.39, we're a little bit below average. But I think we can catch up with what we have forecast uh, coming up again this weekend. Satellite picture shows clouds are trying to really uh, break up here around San Antonio. There was a little area of showers that is working southeast, but uh, this was not it's not producing much rain. It's very quickly moving away. So a partly cloudy afternoon is what you can expect and warm and humid. Right now we're at 85. Dew point is at 72 and it feels hotter than that. Uh, heat indices probably now jumping into the 90s. And we've got a good breeze out of the south southeast at 14 miles per hour with highs near 90 and dew points like that. You can expect heat indices to perhaps jump into the upper 90s later today. So beware of that heat. 86 at 2 o'clock, 87, 3 p.m. There is a small, small chance of a pop up shower storm, but I doubt we're going to see much. 89 is the forecast high and then down into the 70s tonight as clouds make a return and we start off cloudy again on your Friday. Most of Friday will be fine too, but it's once we get into Friday evening that things begin to really change. This is five o'clock on Friday and notice 
Now there's not much there. We're going to start to watch storms zone develop in the mountains of Mexico. By 7 o'clock, storms will have blown up there along the Rio Grande, and this is where we could see some severe weather. And this is going to start to form into a line of showers and storms, and this is where we start to get into that heavy rain. So by 10 p.m. Friday, Lake Eagle Valley Eagle Pass all in line to get some heavy rain and perhaps a little bit of severe weather. By midnight, it's working closer to San Antonio. And then by 2, 3 o'clock, we've got some of that heavier rain moving into here. Uh, now, with all that being said, these uh, computer models have had a hard time with these weather patterns as of late. So this timing is not exact. And there's going to be some questions as to how long it takes this line to get to San Antonio, how slow it moves. The slower it moves, the more rain we're going to get and the bigger issues we may have with some flooding. Uh, but I think this gets the general idea across that Friday night into pre-dawn Saturday is a time frame we've really got to watch for potential for flooding. And then by Saturday morning, it shows some of the showers and storms moving south. But I think even during the day on Saturday, we can get more showers and storms, which would further complicate things. As far as severe weather goes, there is a risk for scattered storms. Uh, San Antonio points west. Uh, through Friday evening. So we're talking about uh, hail, gusty winds being the main threats uh, for these areas. And then, of course, we have the threat for heavy rain. So the total rainfall potential, four to six inches, isolated seven inches plus. You're going to see the lower totals off to the east, but where you see that darker green color, that's where the, the rain can really pile up. And we know about our streams and creeks and low water crossings. What can happen when we can see uh, when we see rainfall like that. So with that in mind, flood watches are in effect Friday evening through uh, Saturday evening. And that's the time frame where uh, we've just got to be so very, very careful. And I know we use the term a lot, turn around, don't drown, but we'll throw it out there one more time. If you do plan to be traveling Friday night, Saturday morning, uh, just be very, very aware of what you're driving into. 87 Friday, 73 Saturday, 77 Sunday for Mother's Day. Mother's Day, I think, features just some light showers, more or less, but it still could add to any flooding issues that we see on Saturday. Uh, it'll be kind of cloudy and coolish. 79 Monday, 79 Tuesday, still with some rain chances, both Monday and Tuesday. We'll be right back. A local lady on the links. She is dominating the NCAA San Antonio Regional. And we've been following this superstar athlete, UTSA senior golfer Cameron Carrion. Yesterday, she killed the competition by six shots. Her teammates celebrated her by showering her with water and celebration. She's the first road runner to win an NCAA Regional, locking up her second straight berth in the championships. And yesterday, she wrapped it all up by sinking a four-foot par putt on 18. And she did it all right in front of her friends and family. Me and my dad probably can't even look at each other in the eye right now because we'll just start crying. <laughs> he had his sunglasses on, so I know he was feeling it. But um, no, it means it means so much. Talk about that course that you're going to be playing during the national championships. It's a mean one. It's tough for sure. Um, I'm glad that I saw it last year and able to, you know, kind of try and get back some of those shots from from last time or just know my way around a little bit better. But that course is tough. But I'm really excited. I feel like my game's at a good spot that I can be more confident not be as scared over some shots and just loosen up and I think that'll that'll help me a lot. You're the champion of this regional. What's that feel like? It feels so good. I feel I feel really happy and especially happy to do it here. All right, here's Cam with the UTSA women's golf coach. Cameron's going to next play in the NCAA National Championships. That's happening May 19th through the 24th in Scottsdale, Arizona. Good for her. Meantime, we've got a whole bunch of kids getting ready to participate in our SA Live, including some older kids. Yes. Yes, yes. And in my case, very old kids. Yes. Anyway. Wait till you see our audience today. But first, oh, as we gear up for Mother's Day, there's nothing like a delicious dish, right? Yes, indeed. Just feast your eyes right down there. And the man who made that is Ryan Dembski from Tootie Pie. What do we have there? Right here, we have our strawberries and cream cake. And we are focusing on berries because moms are very special to us. Ah! And speaking of specials, you have daily specials too, right? Yes, we do. We run daily specials all spring long, starting on Monday with our Manic Monday 350 Empinatas. All right. We also do uh, Tasty Tuesday, which is a special treat each day. Um, he's, ma he's making me so hungry many. right now. So yes. many. We'll hear more about that. And of course, with Mother's Day coming up, 
What's your favorite thing about mom? Let Besides us know. Everything. I know. Yeah. At SA Live, case out on Facebook and Twitter. It All can right. be more than one. We have got some more food. So we have dessert, and we also have another type of dessert here, and a meal, and a Navajo green chili cheeseburger. And look at this, Navajo fried bread, a little bit of whipped Nutella on there, a little bit of caramel sauce. Oh, I can't wait to dig into that. Okay. And we have got a very special fashion show we're going to tell you about. It is sustainable with not only the clothing, but also glass, accents, jewelry, and part of the fashions. Very uh, cool looking. And we continue the chat with David Foster and Catherine McPhee and how you can see them in town. Right? Yeah, they're in town tonight. What are they going to be doing when they're in town? He actually asked me for advice on where to go after the show. <laughs> how many, how long did you... How long is your answer is what I want to know. There it is. Oh, they're a fabulous audience today. More on them coming up too.